Former NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine has just spent his morning in front of the US Senate Science Committee, and although that might sound like the most boring video you've ever clicked on, some of the things he said related to Starship, Blue Origin, and the overall race back to the moon were quite spicy, to say the least. Instead of buying a moon lander, we're going to buy a, a big rocket. Bridenstine was rather pessimistic towards orbital refueling and the sheer number of launches required for the current Artemis plan. But first of all, it might be a little confusing as to why the guy who served as NASA administrator under President Trump's first term was called as a witness to Capitol Hill. Well, it was all for a hearing titled, quote, There's a bad moon on the rise. Why Congress and NASA must thwart China in the space race. If you're less familiar with the whole political process, and trust me, I do not blame you, this is the same committee which Jared Isaacman testified at a few months ago, back when he was the nominee for administrator. This opportunity allowed senators from both parties to ask questions, discuss, and hear opinions from four people, so they could, quote, examine legislative priorities for the upcoming reauthorization of NASA, an agency currently headed by Sean Duffy, who is very much pushing the Moon and Mars agenda at the moment on behalf of the president. SLA is expensive. Too expensive, according to Bridenstine, and its ongoing cost and throughput is not sustainable. But we have it now, so he thinks we need to use it. Along those lines, he praised the so-called Big Beautiful Bill, which secured Artemis 4 and 5 under the current plans with SLS Block 1B and Orion. However, the positives concluded there. His big item? The US doesn't yet have a lunar lander. There are two human landing system vehicles under contract right now. Starship HLS from SpaceX and Blue Moon Mark II from Blue Origin. The former slated for Artemis 3 and 4, the latter slated for Artemis 5. I think it's fair to say Starship has had a rough year so far, taking four attempts to achieve all mission objectives of their V2 ship. SpaceX chief executive Elon Musk is predicting a ship catch as early as three flights from now, or in other words, it's still quite some time away, and ship reuse is going to be rather important for Starship's orbital refueling. Bridenstine's concerns with the current situation even led him to say that, quote, it is highly unlikely we will land on the moon before China. And I want to be clear, we need this rocket to be successful. It's important for the country and it's transformational. But in the meantime, the architecture is as such. We need to launch Starship. That first Starship is a fueling depot that's in orbit around the Earth. Then we need to launch, nobody really knows, nobody knows, but it could be up to dozens of additional Starships to refuel the first Starship. Then once it's fully refueled, then that Starship has to fuel another Starship that is in fact human rated. By the way, that whole in-space refueling thing has never been tested either. We're talking about cryogenic liquid oxygen, cryogenic liquid methane being transferred in space, never been done before. And those concerns are true for both lander options. Starship requires in-space refueling for pretty much any mission beyond low Earth orbit, and Blue Origin's Cislunar Transporter will also require multiple top-ups of cryogenic liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. But Although currently unproven, this is a capability which could open up greater tonnage to the lunar surface. For example, Blue Moon Mark II could deliver up to 30 tons in a one-way configuration, or 20 tons when reusable. On the Starship side of things, Bridenstine also shared his concerns over the vast number of launches, landings, and testing activity. The FAA is working through the final stages to approve 44 Starship launches per year from Launch Complex 39A alone, and SpaceX is also now working on turning Slick 37 into a huge launch complex capable of 76 launches per year. That could bring significant disruption to those areas at the Cape. We need Starship to be successful for a whole host of capabilities. It's also true that if they do what they're setting out to do, there's going to be over 100 launches from Cape Canaveral and Kennedy Space Center per year from Starship. That also means there's going to be testing, there's going to be landing, there's going to be a lot of different things happening. Each time that, that's going to end up shutting down those facilities. And it puts us in a position where we could end up uh, with basically one launch provider. Bridenstine's comments have not been reciprocated by all, and in fact it even sparked a lengthy ex post from former NASA administrator nominee Jared Isaacman. Taking a more optimistic view, he said that poking holes at the complexity of orbital refueling is incorrect. Bringing up the point that the private industry is investing in this capability, it will far expand the potential for exploration at a huge scale. All of this pessimistic talk about the current HLS options from Bridenstine does raise an interesting point. What is he trying to accomplish? Starship is big, Blue Moon is big, and yes, the Artemis architecture as it stands, is incredibly complex. But isn't that the point? 
The mission goal isn't to visit for a few days and never return for 50 years like Apollo, it's to stick around and establish a permanent presence on the lunar surface. In fact, on this very point, Isaacman said that, quote, if all we wanted was another Apollo-style lem, that would surely have simplified things, but are we trying to repeat 1969? That being said though, there was another interesting point brought up by Bridenstine. He shared his disagreements, let's say, with the timing of when Starship was selected as the lander for Artemis III. There was a moment in time when we had no NASA administrator. It was after I was gone and before Senator Nelson became, became the NASA administrator and architecture was selected. And I don't know how this happens, but the biggest decision in the history of NASA, at least since I've been paying attention, the biggest decision happened in the absence of a NASA administrator. And that decision was, instead of buying a moon lander, we're going to buy a, a big rocket. This is 100% true. Starship was selected as the lander while there was no permanent administrator in office. The source selection authority for HLS fell to Kathy Leaders, who was, at the time, NASA's Associate Administrator for Human Exploration and Operations. I, I wonder who appointed her to that role? Uh, Jim Bridenstine. This selection also stemmed from an initial selection of three competitors in April 2020, very much under Bridenstine's leadership. So what are your thoughts on all of this? The current plan, which has been in place for years at this point, is undeniably complex. But is complexity the price of ambition, or is Bridenstine correct to sound the alarm? I guess we'll find out in about 20 years time when it will be really obvious what we should have done. Anyways, I've been Ryan Caton for NSF, thanks for watching, and goodbye.